Okay, uh, uh, we're excited to be back home for another home game, have homecoming. Uh, that's a big deal for our fans, a big deal for our players. Um, and the health update, uh, Jeff Whitaker uh, will be officially out for this season. Uh, he will redshirt. Um, obviously, that's a, that's a blow for our defense, but at the same time, it'll be good for the future. Justin Garrett uh, will not play this week. Uh, but uh, it'll be week to week after that. Uh, we're really looking forward to practicing. I, I've told our guys that we're focused on getting better uh, each week of uh, you know, each week, and this but this week will be no different. Questions? Gus, how did Jeff in particular take it starting with him, and then Justin as well, because he obviously had such a big spring, and to now yeah. be dealing with this this long. Well, first of all, Jeff. I mean, you know, uh, he's kind of been playing banged up the last year or so anyway, and I think it'll just be good for him and um, you know to be healthy. And so that's our that's our goal to get him healthy for for next year and uh, have a chance to have his best season. And for Justin, why week to week as opposed to the red shirt at this point? Yeah, we're just going to see you know how uh, he reacts. I mean, he wants to play, and uh, we'll just see how everything happens with that. Because I had time to watch the film and go back over the, the Ole Miss game. What, what, what stuck out to you the most about that on both sides of the ball? Well, well, first thing that stood out is we, we improved. Um, we improved. Our, our, our players played extremely hard. Um, that's kind of really what stood out to me. I mean, we still made some mistakes that uh, we got to get corrected. Uh, had a chance really to put the game away, you know, on the offensive side. Uh, middle fourth quarter and we had the turnover and it just it made it a, a tough tough deal at the end but uh, there's areas that we can improve on that's a good thing and uh, so our message is going to stay the same. When you talk about the turnovers obviously you, know, you had two right there how do you what can you do about those and how, other than stress it obviously? No you got to coach it better you, the players got to be uh, more accountable um, you just got to be more disciplined I mean that's what it comes down to and uh, we got to do a better job. The one on the exchange between Trey and, and, and Nick, was it what was it? Well, that right there was a run through. I mean, they didn't have a chance on that. That was just a run through. We had a bust up front from a freshman. And we just, we got to get better. And that's the things that that uh, we got to we got to get better on. And we got to, you know, stop making mistakes. But uh, the good thing is, I feel confident that that mistake won't happen again. But is that Trey, was more up front than it was in the backfield. Is Trey a guy who, when he comes off, says, you know, give me another chance to see one of those guys who, you know, doesn't – Wants to get back on the field to, to make up for that, or how? how well, there's no doubt. Of course, of course, that wasn't Trey's fault on that. Like I said up front, that was a that was a bust up front, and the quarterback and the tailback didn't have a chance on that. One. You talked about having an aggressive attacking defense, you know, way up there in tackles for loss. How pleased you've been with, I guess, the nature of the defense so far? Well, I tell you what, they were playing fast. Um, Played in their backfield a lot of the a lot of the night, and I thought that was a, a big key to the game. Um, we got our crowd involved, and our crowd was was unbelievable. The crowd helped us win that game, and a lot of it had to do with our defense gave them something to cheer about. Coach, uh, Gabe Wright was telling me that it takes a lot of confidence to do well in the fourth quarter, and um, you he was saying that this team has improved a lot of passing. What have you seen from this team uh, from the start of the season? And from now, as far as mental, mm -hmm. well, the biggest thing I think our, our team has bought into what our coaches have tried to uh, to tell them. Uh, you know, they're they're playing for the guy beside them. Um, they're practicing hard. They're they're trying to uh, trying to improve. And uh, so I think that's the biggest thing that stands out to me. Guess Nick got banged up a little bit in the end game. How's he doing? Yeah, uh, you know, we expect him to. Uh, you know, to be ready to go. Uh, and I don't think it's, it's anything that's too too big a deal. We're planning to have the practice this week. We got yep. shaves. Yeah. Because <clears throat> what do you look to get out of a week like this? Because uh, not to put down an opponent, but they certainly had a tough go this season and tough go the past couple of years against yeah. FBS teams. So what what are you looking to accomplish? This well, week? Uh, like I said, I know I keep sounding like a broken record, but. I'm looking for us to improve. It doesn't make difference if we're playing in Ole Miss or Western Carolina. We're going to go about the same way. Uh, we're going to have the same approach to practice with the same intensity. We're going to worry about us. And we, that's what we need to do. I mean, we haven't arrived yet. We've got a lot of work to do. We've got a lot of areas we can improve on. And that's going to be our message. So I expect our guys to 
come out today and practice just like they have, or even better, intensity wise and, and focus to detail wise. You talked about the success of the fourth quarter defense and how you know they held teams, and obviously the pressure was impressive Saturday. But how much do you worry about the big yardage again? Another 450 yard plus game, you know, giving up big plays across the board. Well, you know, I, I think the bottom line is find a way to win. Um, and, and the guys have done that. And the, the plays you're talking about, I mean, we need, we need to, to get better in those areas. And that's what we're focused on. As coaches, you focus on the things that uh, you need to improve on. Uh, but a lot of times this season, when the game's been on the line, uh, our guys have found a way to make plays you know, on both sides of football. And I, I think that says a lot about our guys. But as coaches, we'll definitely focus on those things. As, you know, that, you know, that uh, can help stay away from those situations. You guys can talk about passing the game. Is this a week where you'd like to you get that in sync? And well, you, you know, obviously you'd like to be balanced. I mean, that's the best offenses, you know, are usually balanced, especially in our league, and we've got to be more balanced. But at the same time, each game unfolds differently. And the other night, you know, we were having success running the football, and uh, our quarterback was executing the read zone extremely well. Um, so each game is different, but ideally you'd like to be balanced. You talked about that zone read with, with Nick. Was that obviously that was part of the game plan to get him more involved? But is he making better decisions on when to keep it? When, to, when to yeah, he's getting more, where he's more reactive and he doesn't have to think so much. And when you get to that point, uh, that's good. Like I said, last week was really good for him having the week off before that and to get better at that. And he really did a very good job in the read game. In, in all the years that Auburn's played, and, and for all the great running backs, this is the first time that you've had four different 100-yard rushers in the season in a game. What does that speak to? Is, is, that, is that the talent you have to like, play calling? Or what, well, what I, I think that we, first of all, we have three running backs. We've been saying that we feel good about all three of those guys, and they're all three different. <clears throat> and then our quarterback, you know, we, we knew when he got here that he could really um, create things on the, on the ground. The other night he showed a lot of toughness, too. That's kind of what stood out to me, but uh, we can run the football, and in this league, you you need to be able to run the football. Like we were saying earlier, we just need to get where we're balanced and be able to throw the football effectively to get some more first downs. If we do that, we got a chance to be a pretty solid offense before it's all said and done this year. Yes, you talk about Carl Lawson and just what <coughs> makes him different. Well, um, you know, we recruited him. We felt like you know his motor is. Um, is really something else. I mean, he plays extremely hard. College football is a different game than high school, and uh, it took him a couple of weeks to, you know, to get everything down. And the last few weeks, he's been improving. Coach Garner's had a good plan for him, and uh, he just turned it loose and he played his best game. It was a very complete game, uh, not just rushing the passer, but against the run. And uh, he keeps improving. He's got a chance to be a really good player. What about a guy like Ricardo Lewis, who obviously had a good preseason, hasn't necessarily had that, that breakout game? So, what do you see for him in practice? What do you expect for us to do? Yeah, Ricardo's a, a very good athlete. Um, you know, he didn't play receiver in high school, and I think it's just he'll get more and more comfortable as he goes. And uh, he'll have one of those games that, you know, people call a breakout game, and then he'll figure it out and probably not look back. How much of Nick's inconsistency the first couple games, you know, been a result of him just trying to get comfortable, not just with the offense, but with the team. I mean, with players just kind of getting to know each other, like you said, spring, he wasn't here before. So yeah. how much has that part of it, the relationship part of it, been an issue? Really, uh, his teammates have a lot of respect for him. Uh, you know, he's, he's kind of a quiet guy. He didn't say much, but uh, he comes to practice. He practices hard every day. He's got a great attitude. He's very coachable, and his teammates respect that. Uh, so he's, he's earned their their respect and really trust uh, in a short period of time. Yes, this is a week that you'd like to see Jonathan Wallace have an opportunity to play a little bit more than he has. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that'd be good. And, uh, you know, some other guys too would be good. That's the best case scenario. Coach, I was told that this is the 100th homecoming game for Auburn. What does that mean to you? And does that make this one maybe a little bit more special? Yeah, first of all, homecoming is special anyway, especially here at Auburn. If it is the hundreds, that's that's even better. Um, I know our players are excited to, to be back home, and the fact that uh, it's homecoming game.
Guess how did Brandon Fultz and the other guys who replaced Jalen, how did they grade out in the first game? They, they did a solid job. Um, you know, Brandon played, played a lot more snaps than he has before. Kyle Frazier uh, also was helping with that role, played, uh, played a few snaps at wide receiver. But uh, I thought they did an overall <coughs> solid job. What did you see out of Kyle Frazier, wide receiver, this, this week? Uh, he'll, he'll do the same thing. He'll play some wide receiver. and. Um, you know, especially now that we lost Jalen, he's a guy that understands the offense. He's a smart guy. He's similar to Cody. I mean, played quarterback in this offense. Cody picked it up very quick in the same type of role. Is that kind of why you made the switch, bringing him back from safety to wide out? Or was that the uh, there, there was some factors. That was one of them. How, how much was there knowing the, the scheme and blocking, Brandon especially, out wide, how much does that uh, factor in your decision to make them receivers like uh, Denson? Yeah, I mean, you look at us, I mean, we've always needed receivers to be able to block effectively on the perimeter. Um, and that's a big thing of what we do. And uh, so that that's a big part of it. I know CJ hasn't played a whole lot lately. Is he just trying to get back to full speed? Yeah, yeah, he's just trying to get back to full speed. He was banged up last week. And uh, I think he played one play and he was by half speed. And so we just said, you know, let's, let's give him some rest. And, and, and we'll need him. We'll need him 100%. He'll be there. He'll be there pretty quick. How's, how's Gabe Wright doing? We talk about all the youngsters on, on the defensive front, but how, how's he doing? You know, I really feel like Gabe had his best game uh, of the season. I don't think it was close. Uh, you know, he's doing what Coach Garner asked. Uh, doing a good job with uh, the run fits up front, and did a good job in the pressure. You know, when they were passing up front too. So. That's the best overall game. Is it almost easier for the youngsters to kind of make a strong push, uh, you know, compared to the say the seniors and juniors, just because they're used to maybe doing it another way and they have to kind of adjust it? I don't think so. I mean, this, you know, we went through spring with these guys, and now they all should should really be in the same boat as far as that goes. Yes, Rodney had spoken in the offseason about that Gabe in particular. He wanted to, in his words, change his collar from a, a white collar guy to a blue collar guy, just be a different kind of mindset mentality. Have you seen that difference, and do you think having Bell McGee involved has in any way changed how Gabe has been in the last six months or something? You know, I, I think last week, you know, definitely you saw a lot more blue collar. You know, I would say that that was the biggest difference in the last week. Gus, what about Casanova? What's the prognosis on him? Uh, you know, we've got some, got some good news for him. He'll be out there practicing today. And, uh, that was a scary deal, and it looks like it's going to turn out good. Was it Stinger spring neck? I believe so. Stinger. In a situation like that, obviously you take every precaution, but to see him come back and then did that did that help lift the team? Seem like you know, I think so. I know it encouraged me. You know, when you got one of your players uh, carted off, that's one of the worst feelings you can have as a coach. And um, then I looked up, you know, saw him back there on the sideline standing up and. You know, with a smile on his face, and that, that gave me a lift. I'm sure it gave the rest of our coaches and players a lift, too, because we had some players who were very concerned, too. Um, it's tough on players when they see one of their teammates get carted off. You know, a lot of times that affects teams in a lot of different ways. <coughs> Gus, it's been a while since you, we've seen a pass rush like you had against uh, Owala Saturday night. You mentioned, you mentioned the sacks do a lot in terms of energizing the crowd. Yeah. What does that do for the entire team? Yeah, it, uh, you know, that was a big lift. Uh, they're, they're a good offense, good quarterback with scary receivers. And, you know, even when they didn't sack him, they put some pressure on him, made him throw the ball away a lot of times. And we've been talking about, uh, you know, really focusing on being able to put pressure on the quarterback. And uh, we also focused on our run fits. And those are the two areas that we improved the most in last game, and so I thought that's why it was very encouraging. Yes, Jonathan Ford was a guy who moved to the defense when Jonathan Jones went down, other injuries took mm -hmm. place. Is there any thought process to moving him back to offense? Uh, not at, right now. Uh, what we said, we're going to move him over there this, this season, and uh, we'll talk after the season where he's at, but he's making progress. Um, he's got a great attitude. He's a very good athlete, and we think he's going to be an outstanding player. Uh, Jeremy Johnson. Uh, is he probably still in red shirt mode. Or well, we hadn't played him yet. I mean, obviously, I know it's getting to a point now where you, you know, you gotta do what's best for him and what's best for your your team. And uh, but he's still getting a lot of reps in practice, and uh, you know, he's improving. 
no doubt. And we got Jonathan's getting a lot of reps in practice too.